Hello, princesses, and welcome back to Not Fit for Print Beauty with me, Rebecca. Today we have a long-awaited Charlotte Tilbury review. There's a story. There's always a story, right? So we have a bit of a long-awaited Charlotte Tilbury review. We're going to do two in one. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer and, and, fanfare, the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Brightening Flawless Finish Powder. We're going to talk about them. We're going to try them in numerous ways, especially this little powder. And I'm going to give you my opinion. Um, there's a story, as I told you. There's always a story. Yeah, there's always a story. These came right away, but this shipped on the same day. And so I was like, oh, you know what? I'll wait and then I'll do them together because they should arrive together. And what's concealer without a good powder, right? Sounded like a good idea at the time. Then they lost this in the mail, said delivered it wasn't. They reshipped it, but they accidentally reshipped two more of these. And then I had, and, and by then I got busy and I was like, oh, forget it. I just waited, <laughs> just waited. So I told you it wasn't that great of a story, but you know, I, I had to share it, right? You asked. Okay, all right, so let's talk about these products and try them on. This is the Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. It comes in 30 shades, which is a lot, and we'll talk about my shade choice as we go into the demo. I got shade four right here, a little light, and shade six, a little olive, but we'll talk about what that means. These are $33 each. They are meant to hydrate brighten, but you can also conceal, correct, you can even contour. So uh, Charlotte Tilbury, the folks over there say, you know, get a lighter one to brighten. You can even highlight with it. Um, you can use one that's your skin tone to conceal, and you can even go a little darker if you kind of want to contour with them a little bit. So they're they're marketing them as a multi-purpose type product, but I think most of us are really buying it as to brighten and conceal. But if you contour with them, good for you. And we're going to talk about my shade choices and try them on. While I have you, though, I will say I have not, I've avoided reviews, which is a very hard thing to do when you're a reviewer. But many of you, Veronica um, from our community came to me first and said, are you getting sparkly flecks in yours? And I said, no. And she showed me and talked about the mica in it. And I'll be darned. She showed me her hand and they were like little like diamondy flecks. Since Veronica and I talked about that, I've seen that a bunch of other places and I've heard reviews um, have mentioned it. I haven't seen those reviews. I'm not getting that. So it's like how it reacts. It's definitely the mica, right? But I'm not getting those diamondy, you know, glistening um, particles. And I've been playing with this for a while while waiting for the brightening flawless finish powder to arrive. I've been using this a lot and really enjoying it, actually. I always do a concealer spectrum. And I always say, I didn't bring them out with me today, but I always say that the Giorgio Armani uh, Power Fabric is one of the lightest consistency and most buildable concealers you can have. And I always say that the, like the Pat McGrath, to me, is the thickest. I'm not good with those really thick ones. I put them on too much and they cake because I have no patience. I like these, and I would, because these are moving a little bit thicker than the Giorgio Armani Power, Power Fabric, a little bit less watery. They're not quite to the middle consistency, and they definitely don't get over into Pat McGrath, KVD, Good Apple, thick category. Okay, so to me, these are in that light to medium coverage, kind of like a Dior would be, um, and I like them. I really do like them. Clinique had a really great one a while back. Kind of reminds me of that a little bit. So I think it conceals and builds and doesn't cake. I'm really a fan and I like this better than her last concealer release, which as you know, was impossible to open. This one performs well and behaves like a concealer should. It knows its concealer place in terms of opening. So. I like these, but I'm going to show you how I use them, and then you can talk about what you think of my shade choices, too. Okay, the Airbrush Brightening Flawless Finish Powder is $42, and this little guy comes in two shades. I bought the really white-looking one. I mean, it's translucent, but I bought the really white-looking one that's for fair to medium skin, quite obviously, um, although I'm sure people will be doing tricks, buying darker and, you know, um, kind of contouring with it. That is not in my wheelhouse, but anyway, there are two. Um, and the other one is, of course, um, for deeper complexions. This is meant to brighten and blur. Um, it's micro-pressed, and it can be applied, used a bunch of ways. It can be applied to the high points of the face to highlight. Um, it could be applied just as a setting powder, 
you know, over concealer. It could also be applied as a setting powder over her original airbrush flawless finish powder. Um, we're going to try, we're going to experiment that back and forth today. We're going to do one eye and one eye. This is the original powder that's won so many awards and is so famously fabulous, right? So it can go over that. And it can also be used as a finishing powder. Now, I have a video that I'm going to link below. The difference between setting powder and finishing powder. We're going to use this as a setting powder. And then at the end, we're going to try this out as a finishing powder as well. I'll link my video below with the basics that you need to know. Setting powder sets your complexion products, you know, your foundation, your concealer. Finishing powder, literally as it sounds, when it's all finished, you kind of go over and buff it in and it makes everything all smooth. The fact that this is called Airbrush Flawless Finish makes everything confusing as it's a setting powder. That she just means the finish on the powder on the complexion would be I've lost everybody. I'll shut up now. I'll link my video. <laughs> Below. Instead, we're gonna we're gonna, the video explains it, but you can ask any questions down below. Instead, we are gonna go right now to the demo because I really want to get into that, and then I kind of want to hear what you guys think of um, of these products and if you've tried them since mine were lost and route. Okay, so let's go to the demo right now. Okay, so the only thing I have on my face right now is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation in for warm. No, no, I do not have warm skin. <laughs> this is that crazy undertone. Warm ended up working, who knows? Okay, so I have a bit of a confession. I have shade four and shade six. We're gonna use four under the eyes and six on the rest of the face. And I'm gonna just do one side of the face so we can kind of compare. As you know, I have been playing with these for a few days. I, I really do like them. Um, but my confession is that I am not great with concealer shades. I can get really picky with foundation shades, but with concealer, for instance, my favorite, as you guys probably know, is the Giorgio Armani Power Flex. I have it in three, four, four and a half, five, and five and a half, and I just grab whichever one. I end up bronzing, I end up, I don't get picky. So I am not, I honestly, really. So this is a four, too light. This is a six. Too dark maybe I don't know I'll let you guys tell me what you think I do have a concealer brush here from Sonia G and we're gonna also then we're gonna put the powder over I'll tell you what we're gonna do with the powder after let's just look at this side of the face first and I'm gonna go in here um, by my eyes I have a red nose too so I like to do this I get dark here and kind of around here and then we're gonna kind of blend those in that's around the eyes and then I'm gonna use the six around my redness, I get very red on the nose and kind of around the nose. And I also have a little bit of discoloration and some redness here, some veins that show there. Okay, so now that I'm all polka dotted, let's go ahead and look at the difference, first of all, uh, from the three, I mean, sorry, from the four and the six, the four and the six. The six is really olive, the four is really pink, or so it's appearing on my skin. Um, but I haven't had too much of a problem once I blend them in. And the olive isn't bad for getting rid of that red undertone um, that I've got going on parts of my face. And the pink isn't too bad at blending in. Now you're going to say, oh, you're using the same brush, Rebecca, that's not helping. Uh, I'm okay with that because I, I kind of want it to be uniform. Okay, so there you go, just kind of blending that in. So, I'm removing my mirror. This side of my face is finished. This side of my face just has the foundation from Charlotte Tilbury, the beautiful skin, and no concealer. Now let's go ahead um, and use the powder. Again, we're gonna just do it on this side of the face. And I brought over these beautiful um, artist brushes from Wayne Goss. You can use this powder in a few different ways. You can use it over the airbrush, uh, powder that Charlotte already makes. You can use it on its own or you can use it as a finishing powder. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a little bit of everything. So what I'm going to do right now is do the rest of my face. I'll have you wait through it. I'll speed it up with the concealer so that we can try this two different ways over the airbrush and alone. So here we go. got two of these Wayne Goss artist brushes. Let's do this eye. I'm going to just put the number two from the airbrush flawless 
uh, finishing powder underneath this eye. And on, so on this eye, we'll apply um, the new um, brightening powder uh, over her powder, her legendary powder. I do it over the whole eye uh, when I do it, and it really is nice and keeps it uh, from creasing. Okay, so I have got the concealer all over my face. I know I like this concealer. For me, it really works. And I don't see those mica glistening particles that so many people do. Okay, so we have an eye here with nothing on it. I am going to switch brushes for this one. So here's the slightly bigger of the Wayne Goss brushes. And on this eye, we're going to just put the brightening powder alone. Obviously, on this eye, it will go over the uh, Charlotte powder. Okay. Just swiping it on gently. Well, that's actually really pretty. Brightening powder alone. This eye, we're going to do the brightening powder over the airbrush flawless powder. And I just like to go over the whole eye, you guys. It just kind of helps me. Let's do a little more. All right, let me look in my mirror. I think I like it better. What do you guys think? I think I like this eye better, where it is over the shade number two, I should have told you, of the airbrush flawless finishing powder. Fla flawless finish, it's called, sorry. I think I like this over it better than on its own. What do you guys think? All right, our next experiment, part two, is gonna continue. I'm gonna put the rest of my makeup on, and I'll use powder makeup. And then we're gonna use this uh, brightener as a finishing powder uh, with this flat brush from Sonia G. So that's our next step. I'm gonna go put on some makeup. Okay, I'm kind of excited about this part of the experiment. As you see, I've gone and put on just a little bit of makeup. I like the uh, Guerlain Meteorites. You'll know that if you've been with this channel a while. Uh, put on with this lovely flat style face brush from Sonia G. And I like to buff it in after all makeup is over as a finishing powder. What you saw earlier was a setting powder just for the complexion products. I do have a video on the difference. If you want me to link that below, perhaps I should. We're gonna try this also as a finishing powder since it is brightening, which means that all of my makeup is over. We're gonna use it to finish. We're gonna put it on the brush here. I got a nice caking of it, and I am just going to buff it onto my face just on this side, and then we'll see if we like it. With the uh, Guerlain Meteorites, and you just buff it in circles, guys. Just buff in the makeup. It doesn't take off anything. It just blurs any lines if it's doing its job. Okay, so now for the moment of truth, what do you guys think? With this side, we have our brand new airbrush brightening uh, flawless finishing powder used as a finish powder. Flawless finish powder used as a finishing powder and a setting powder. This side has no finishing powder. Which side do you guys like better? All right, let's do the other side really quickly. Now I know that these are called flawless finish powders, but they're setting powders. <laughs> setting is just for complexion. This is, um, I also just use this as a finishing, you know, when all of your makeup is done. Uh, okay, so the question becomes, what do I think of the products? I'm actually really enjoying this brand new Brightening Flawless Finish Powder. I'm actually enjoying it, but I will tell you this, already I like this eye better that has the uh, regular powder under it and this over it. I kind of like this to finish. And the question is, could you just use this as a setting powder, then go ahead and use this at the end like a finishing powder and just hit it under the eyes at that time? that's probably what I will end up doing. So in other words, I am liking this better at the end of my makeup routine over other powders, probably creams too. So again, what I would probably do is use this under the eyes, the original um, Flawless Finish Powder, the original, I use number two, whatever shade you use. And then I would go in with this, again, there's two shades. I would just use a flat style brush, hit everywhere, and that's when I would get under the eyes at the same time. I love time-saving techniques with makeup none of us have all day. It's fun when we do, but we don't. So I'm, I'm going to keep experimenting with it, but I'm saying thumbs up. I think my face looks brighter and more awake with this, especially over that. Okay? In terms of the concealer, I, sadly, though I professionally review makeup, I'm not the one to ask about shades. The, this one's too light. This one's probably too olive. 
eh, the olive gets rid of some of the redness, the lightness brightens. You could switch these out on me and I probably wouldn't notice. And I, I have no ego, so I can admit that. I'm not really picky with concealer shades, unless they're like obviously far too light or obviously too dark. Anywhere in the middle, I generally don't notice. I really love um, where these fit in, in terms of the light to medium kind of um, consistency. I am not seeing the Mica bright sparkly flex, and I'm not seeing them on my face, and I don't see them on my hand when I swatch them, but many of you. Uh, Veronica was the first who told me, but many have mentioned it, and I have heard, I haven't watched any reviews. Why am I conducting airplanes here? I haven't watched any reviews, but I have heard uh, that some people are saying it in reviews too. Okay, I am not seeing that. It might drive me crazy if I did. Having, not being able to see it, you guys, I gotta tell you, I'm kind of loving it. For me, I'm loving it because of the consistency. I think it's pliable. I think it's quick. I love the fact that I can just open it and use it rather than her other concealer, which if you had anything on your hands at all, you couldn't open and it was a mess and a pain. This is nice and easy to apply. I like that kind of light to medium consistency of it. I think that's really nice. Um, I think it's a great product. I'm definitely going to be using it. So all good news on this end, um, but we are a community and we are a community of many opinions. My opinion is not the queen of the hill. Yours matters too. So definitely let me know below what you think if you have tried or refuse to try uh, these concealers or this brightening powder. I'm really curious about your thoughts. So definitely put them below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I sure hope that you did. Hey, if you haven't already done so, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, and you can even become a member if you want to get any behind the scenes uh, videos. I have some of those going. You can hit the join button and just be happy. I'm a member for just silly little fun stuff on the side, um, which I'm filming today, actually. Uh, also, you know, hit me up over on TikTok and Instagram, too, for more. And I hope to see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.